like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on Let others seek a home below I feel like traveling on Which flames devour or waves or flow I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on The Lord has been so good to me I feel like traveling on Until that blessed home I see I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on pretty good life down here on earth. I really do. Um, Lord blesses in ways that I can't even, I won't take time to, to express, but I do have a pretty good life and I'm so thankful for it. But you know, you probably have a pretty good life too, but there's something missing. There's a longing, Brother Tom, that I have that this world can't fix. I, I love my family and, uh, and I enjoy what I do, but I guess my heart, some of it's over there. I'm looking for something that this life can't quite fulfill. Um, and I guess sometimes I'm just kind of ready to go home. I, I don't know. I've, I've, I guess I thought old people was the only ones. Maybe, I'm, maybe I am an old person now, I guess. I thought only old people said that. And I got to thinking, Mark, you are one of the old people now. So, you know, I suppose that's the way that goes. But um, I'm just longing for something on the other side. On the other side of that gate... On the other side of that river, there's something that I don't know about, that I can't imagine, that my brain can't really wrap around, and I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that someday on the other side of Jordan. On the other side of Jordan, just beyond that shining strand, I'll be resting in that beauty of that land. I'll go walking through the garden with that man of Galilee, who's the master of life's troubled stormy sea. I'll be waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and lead me on to that land on the other side of jordan they'll be waiting there for me and i'm ready lord i'm ready now to go
On the other side of Jordan, I have friends I long to see. I have loved ones in that city waiting for me. They are resting from their labor. They are free from all their cares. They are parted from the burdens of the years. I'll be waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and take me home to that land. On the other side of Jordan, they'll be waiting there for me. And I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready now to go. I'll be waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and lead me home to that land. On the other side of Jordan, they'll be waiting there, I know. And I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready now to go. One more time. I'll be waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and lead me home to that land. On the other side of Jordan, they'll be waiting there, I know. And I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready now to go. Well, in my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. Me, my Jesus, there, and it will be so grand. When I Surrounded by rich eyes and tone When I first look on Jesus' face I know I've been saved by His amazing grace Well, in my robe of white I'm gonna fly away to that land so fair Me, my Jesus, there and it will be so grand When I get to that land in my robe of white I will fly away
shining What, what a wonderful reunion No, no more to roll I'll be happy shining, Happy Happy when I get home I'll be happy on that day When I hear Jesus say Welcome to come now and in our home I shall join in heaven Hallelujah to the mighty King of all On that day, with the blessed Savior, there I'll stay with my Lord and Savior. Joy, Joy bells are gonna ring for me when I cross that foam. I'll be happy, shiny, happy, happy when I get home. I'll be happy on that day when I hear Jesus say, Welcome, come now. about good for two songs and that's about it. I'll tell you a sweet little story that my um, sister-in-law Joyce was sharing with me. You know, my brother's been gone. He's been gone a year in March and uh, the Lord has really taken care of her, but he gave her some instructions when he knew he wasn't going to make it. And he told her to not make any uh, quick decisions, but a year, you know, a year from the day she calls it his going home, he wanted her to put the house up for sale. So she's done that, and she went to look for a piece of property closer to her kids. And uh, she went to look at this piece of property. And uh, actually, her and Danny had planned to move there before he got COVID and um, left us. But anyway, she was walking this property with the realtor, and she just started praying. And she said, she said, I was praying to the Lord and to Danny, give me a sign. Lord, if this is your will, give me a sign. And uh, she said, the realtor, she said, I told the realtor, look for a rock, look for just something to help me seal this deal. Well, my brother loved to golf. He loved to golf. He was retired and he was a full-time pastor. So he golfed when he could. So she said, the realtor said, I think there's something over here and it's, she said, I can barely see it, but I think it's a rock or a ball of some kind. And so the realtor and Joyce got to digging down in the grass, and it was a golf ball. And she said, that is my sign. And she said, and that's, she had prayed about it. I mean, she just didn't go out on a whim. But, you know, I believe God can answer our prayers. And uh, last Saturday, and I won't go into detail because it's very private, but last Saturday I was praying and I wanted to see God move in a very specific way just for me and my little immediate family. I'll just put it that way. And I just started praying. And I mean, I never said anything to Tom. I never said anything to anybody else. Just prayed Mary to God. And it was just like when I was praying, God said, do you really believe I can do this? And I just said out loud, I do. I do believe you can do this. And I'm telling you, overnight... And I asked him, I said, I really want you to do this. And um, anyway, I just can't go into it. But anyway, God did that just like that overnight. Within 24 hours, he did that. And I asked him for some very specific parameters. And he just smoothed that all out. And I'm telling you, he did that for me, my boy, for me. Nobody else's prayer had prayed that but me. And I'm glad we can have that kind of relationship with him, whether it's big or it's small. And so many times. Christians, the enemy will come after our faith, won't he? And I love it. Those are faith builders that I believe it was Kyle was preaching about, building our faith muscles. And I feel very strong in the Lord. I know I can trust him and he'll never, ever let me down. And I love all of you people. Appreciate the girls and Tom, Tom singing. And I feel like it's been years since I've heard them sing for some reason. And uh, they come out of retirement tonight and sung for us. And it was good to hear them and and Mark, as always, and we are blessed, aren't we? We are blessed. When Tom said Sunday night that Raymond Lewis would be here, I thought I seen I was supposed to preach, but I got awful excited when he said that. <laughs> I got awful excited. And uh, my excitement went from up here to, and about two seconds later, back down here again. So, But uh, 
That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I hope you can handle me two times in a row. If, if Dad had to preach two times in a row, he'd probably be on the altar. No, I'm just kidding. I told him about that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I do have a, a shorter message tonight. If, uh, if everything goes as planned, we're going to hear in just a little bit. Uh, if it's all right, we're going to play a uh, little slideshow up here on our screens of our, uh, our trip this past summer to Tennessee that our youth group took. And uh, it's just kind of our way of uh, saying thank you, I guess, to the church and uh, everything and everyone that was involved with that. And uh, I know that's an expensive trip, but I can tell you this, there was memory made on that trip that will last forever. And uh, so we put together at the end, when I'm done here in a little bit, we're going to try to play that. If it goes planned, we're going to try to play that tonight. And uh, so I'll, I'll try not to be long. But uh, if you have your Bibles tonight and you want to turn with me, I'm just going to read just a few verses tonight out of 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter number 4, for those of you who want to follow along. 2 Timothy chapter 4, start with verse number 16. Uh, amen, you pray for me, and I'm dry as a bone. Amen, not my soul and spirit, my mouth. So, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 says this, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver, deliver me from evil work and I will preserve me into his heavenly kingdom to whom be the glory forever and ever Amen. Amen. Here in our here in our scripture tonight, in our text, uh, this is Paul's writing, of course, and and Paul's life is coming to an end here in Second Timothy chapter chapter number four. His life is coming to an end, and uh, in reading this tonight, uh, looking at Paul, it's almost as if in chapter number four he does what every seemed like good man of God did in the Bible. He starts doing a roll call. That's what Paul does on on his on his deathbed, more or less, is, is he's doing this, uh, this roll call of who's with him and who is against him. And uh, it seemed as if uh, you read it, it says, Do thy diligence come shortly unto me, for demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. Then he goes on to say, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark, bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me in the ministry. Alexander, the coppersmith, did much evil unto me. Uh, and he starts talking about these men and starts talking about the ones that stood with him, but then he also mentions the one that stood against him tonight. And, and uh, he goes on to talk about this and, and so on and so forth. But then we get to verse number 17, and he says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. And I think what Paul was trying to let us know here in our scripture tonight, it doesn't matter who's going to come in your life or who's going to go in your life. I ain't going nowhere in your life. I'm somebody that'll stand with you on the good days. I'm somebody that'll stand with you on the bad days. And I'm somebody that'll stand with you on the in-between days, if you know what I'm talking about there. But here in Paul's life, I, you know, and, and even in my life itself, I've come to realize in my life that people's going to come and go. I mean, there's been some people in my life I thought, man, they'll be there forever. But forever for them was different than it was for me. Then there was people in my life I thought, well, they won't last just a couple months, but yet they're still in my life to this very day. So people's going to come and people's going to go, and that's all good and, and, and everything. But tonight I'm thankful to know that God ain't going nowhere on me, and God ain't going nowhere on you, especially in this day and hour that we're living in. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this, and there's a hundred different places you could go with this tonight as a preacher preaching this this scripture and, and uh, you know, looking at this, I preached this, uh, I felt just like it was a couple years ago, but I found the message this week and it was in 2014 is when I preached this scripture. Does anybody remember it? Anybody, anybody don't remember that? But it was in 2014, but my guess it had been like 2018, 2019, but that just goes to show you how time can get away from you. But I preached on this scripture and I, I preached on Paul talking about Luke being with him about Mark being with him, and I, I preached kind of like this, aren't you thankful for your Lukes, aren't you thankful for your Marks, and 
And we can all say tonight that we have those Lukes in our life, that they stand with us and they're for us and they'll do anything for us. But then we also have those Demases and we have those Alexanders who forsook us having loved this present world and, and the evil that he done unto Paul, the things. And here's the thing tonight, and I, this is just the way God made us for some reason. If we was in a big room and there was a thousand people over there in my corner cheering me on, and there was one person over there talking bad about me, running my name in the ground. You know who I would focus all my attention on? The one person standing over there running their jaws about me or whatever. Uh, but that's just how we do. We spend so much time on Demases and Alexanders. We just need to thank God for our Lukes. Thank God for, for the marks in our life that God has put there. They ain't going nowhere. And, and I've learned, I'm thankful I got a mom and dad that stand with me, a wife that stands with me. I feel like I have a lot of people in this church that stand with me and I stand with you. But can I say tonight, I've got to the place in my life where it don't make no difference if anybody stands with me or stands against me. As long as God's standing with me, it really don't make no difference tonight if you stand with me or not. We think about Jesus. He walked this earth for 33 years, didn't he? I mean, he was perfect, was he? He was perfect. The Bible says he was. He was tempted in every way, but yet never, never knew sin. That's amazing today to know, isn't it? Never knew sin, but you know there were still people that talked bad about him. There was people that hated him. And if Jesus was perfect and people didn't like him, then why, why are we trying to please each other tonight? We, we may as well just stop doing that. I ain't here to please you, and I don't want you to come here to please me. We're here for one reason and one reason only. That's to please the one that ain't ever going to leave us, that ain't ever going to forsake us, and the one that's going to stand by us even until the very end. And I could have went a lot of different ways with this, and I was praying how God wanted me to go with this, and I, I knew I couldn't preach real long tonight because we want to do this slide show, and I was asking God on what to do, and you know, I could have preached how God will stand with us through the fire. And I could have preached on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, the Bible literally says that the Lord stood with him inside the fire. And I mean, we could have jumped and shouted and say, praise God, yeah, he will stand with us in the fire. I could have preached on Daniel in the lion's den. He got thrown in the, the den of lions. He laid down there and I believe just slept on them lions that night. We could say, praise God, the Lord stood with Daniel. He was faithful and we could say he stood with Elijah. He stood with Elisha. He stood with David. He stood with Samson. He stood with Josiah. He stood with a lot of men of God in the Bible. But tonight, here's what God showed me and I'll be done. I'm thankful that God has stood with us. Aren't you? Yeah, I'm thankful that God stood with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm, I'm thankful God stood with Daniel. God stood with Elijah and all the ones. But I'm thankful here in this day and hour, God's standing with us. I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm thankful God ain't going to turn around and walk away from us. And we ain't ever going to wake up and God not be there. God will stand with us. Rain, shine, day, night, afternoon, morning, evening, middle of the night. It makes no difference. God is never going to leave us tonight. And that's encouraging to know, isn't it? That's encouraging to know. Wouldn't it be awful if we served a God, if we went to sleep and thought, well, is God going to be with me tomorrow? Is he going to be with my family? Is he going to be with my grandchildren? Is he going to be with my children? We don't have to worry about that today. We can go to sleep assured that God will stand with us tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. And that's encouraging tonight to know. It is. God has stood with us. These past couple years, these past couple years, starting with 2020, I mean, our whole world is just, I mean, we had to do a lot of different and peculiar things. Not only in the church, but in our everyday life. Uh, masks become a routine. It was almost like I always made sure I had my keys, I had my wallet, I had my phone. Uh, now so I got to have my mask. Where's my mask? Because you ain't allowed to go, go nowhere, do anything if you ain't got a mask. That's just the way it was for a while. And we even said this, is it ever going to be normal again? Well, tonight we fellowshiped. It's getting, it's getting more normal every day get more normal every day. You don't hear a lot of people catching COVID these days. I hope it just, I mean, I hope that thing just sells out of here, don't you? I do, but man, there's a lot of things we had, we had to go through. And this is what I heard, and I mean to tell you, I had to fight back the tears when I heard this the other day. It was a preacher on the radio, and he was talking, and this is what he said. He said, if the church you're going to, just talking to Radio Land, he said, if the church you're going to after COVID and the year of 2020 and the year of 2021, if the church you're going to still has unity and still has just as many people going than before COVID, your church is a walking miracle. That's what he said. That's what he said. And the reason I had to fight back the tears is because I don't feel like, I mean, the unity in this church is just as sweet and precious as it's ever been. Bible says, oh, how good 
Oh, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And man, I feel like we're just that great big old popcorn ball that Brother Deb talks about, don't you? I want nothing good but good for you. You want nothing good for me. I love everybody in this church and I hope you love me. I feel like unity's just as sweet as it ever has been. I mean, the church is growing. I mean, there's new people in every, every Sunday. I look back and think, who in the world's that? Who in the world's that? Who in the world's that? People just coming, numbers are growing. People, the spirit's still fresh, everything's still good. And you know what that man said? We're a walking miracle tonight. And you wanna know why that, that we, we've come through all this? I'm thankful that God stood with our pastor, God stood with our assistant pastor, God stood with our board. I'm thankful God has stood with this church. And you know, when people come here, I don't want him, them coming here saying, what a pastor, what a board, uh, what a church. I want them leaving here saying, what a God that stayed with him, even in the midst of everything that went on. God stood with us tonight. We need to raise our hands and thank him for it tonight. We do, we need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah, Paul was saying, Paul was talking about everybody leaving him and uh, everybody doing evil unto him. Then he got to the place and said, notwithstanding. That phrase, notwithstanding, means in spite of it all. In spite of it all. So in other words, Paul was saying this. Yeah, they left me. Yeah, they done evil unto me. But in spite of it all, the Lord stood with me. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? Aren't you thankful for that, that the Lord is standing with us? Stand, why, why don't we have to be afraid? Why, why can we live fearless? Because the Lord is standing with us. He ain't ever left us one time. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. You know what I feel like the enemy would have liked to have done to Paul right here? I feel like he would have liked to have backed him into a corner. I do. Paul was one of the greatest preachers ever breathed there, I feel like. I mean, he was, I mean, his life, I mean, was a roller coaster ride, wasn't it? I mean, just thrown in prison for preaching the word. I mean, life was threatened everywhere he went. But he just kept right on going, just didn't seem like it ever phased him. We had our first FCA meeting a few weeks ago at the school and Brian talked about Paul. That was his lesson. And he said, here's the amazing thing about Paul. And he's right. He said, Paul was sitting in prison writing to the church of Philippians. And he said, he had every right to be upset. He had every right to be negative. He had every right just to be flat out mad like we all get sometimes, Amen. We all get that way sometimes. We're human. It's just the way life goes sometimes. He had every right to be frustrated. But you know what he did the whole time he was in there? He encouraged everybody else. Encouraged everybody else. I mean, I feel like he's one of the greatest preachers there ever was. And Paul, talking about the people that left, talking about the people that stood, Paul was in the place of his life where it didn't make no difference to him. In spite of it all, God stood with him. God stood with him. And I feel like that right here, Paul getting ready to breathe his last breath, I feel like the enemy would, enemy would have loved to just back him in a corner to try to get Paul. I do. And you know what the enemy would have liked to have done to us in the, these past couple of years? He would have liked to have backed us up in that corner and get that one over there, mad at that one over there and hating that one over here. Now, I mean, just a total chaos. And I think it was last week. Last week, I, I had to go preach somewhere. I've been week four last, I can't remember. And, and, and Tyson went with me. And Tyson testified and Tyson sang and I, I, I kind of testified before I preached and, and you know what we did? We bragged on our church. That's what we did. And I walked out the doors and I said, man, I kind of feel bad. I kind of feel bad. And Tyson said, I do too. I was thinking about that. You know, I mean, you know, we was, I mean, we was bragging on our church and about how good the services have been, how we've been seeing people saved because they ain't been seeing any of those things. And it kind of made me feel bad that, you know, that, I don't ever want to brag on, on, on anything, but and is it really wrong to brag on your church though? Is it ever really wrong to brag on God about him saving somebody and his spirit being here? It ain't ever wrong to brag on it. Ain't ever wrong to brag on it. We're walking miracles tonight. We're walking miracles. You know, here's, here's what's amazing about church and about our Bibles and about everything about this unity. It's from the very first message ever preached at Beach Fork Church. I don't know what year Beach Fork was established exactly. Uh, a long time ago. But somewhere, somebody got a burden for Beach Fork Church to be established and started. And from the very first message ever preached years and years ago in whatever church it was, they, they preached the same message, you know, the same, out of the same book as I, I'm preaching out of tonight. 
I preach Sunday night out of the same book I'm preaching tonight. Tom preached Sunday morning out of the same book I'm preaching. For year after year, month after month, week after week, day after day, we come to the house of God three times a week. We sing the same songs. We see the same people. We preach out of the same book. Wouldn't you think somewhere along the line you'd think to yourself, man, I'm bored with it. Well, don't you think somewhere along the line you would? I mean, when I, get, when I watch the same movie over and over and over again, like Tom was talking about with his girls, I do the same thing with my girls. And after about the third or fourth time, I'm sick of this movie. You know, I'm bored with this movie. I, I mean, I can quote the movie. I know what's going to happen next. Wouldn't you think we would get bored with it somewhere along the line? But you know where I find myself at 30 years old? I find myself just as excited to come to church as I was when I was 20 years old. Just excited. It's just, it's just fresh every time. Here's what I love about the church I go to in Beach Fork. Here's what I love. is when you walk through those doors, it's hard telling what's going to happen. And that's what I love about this place. That's what I love about this place. Yeah, we preach from the same book. We sing a lot of the same songs. We say a lot of the same stuff. I mean, I feel like it's just as fresh every week. The more we live on, with each breath we breathe, it just gets sweeter and sweeter each and every single day. How's that happen? Because he's standing with us. That's how it's happening, because he's standing with us. And I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm thankful for that tonight. Paul was a man of many times he got, I mean, just knocked fight on his back. He did. I mean, you read about Paul's life. I ain't going to take the time to go over all that tonight. But there was many times where, I mean, boom, he was just flat on his back. I mean, life itself just on Paul. And sometimes I think that's where God wants us to be, flat on our back, because then we're looking up. We're looking up towards him. And sometimes I think that's where he wants us to be. He wants us looking towards him. We've looked everywhere else for help. And then he's, okay, I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to to get you to look up. And boom, he knocks us flat on our back. Just to get us to look up because sometimes we're stubborn people and we're hard-headed people, aren't we? We are. We want to try to do hands-on, do everything ourselves. When in reality, we just need to look up towards him. Realize he ain't ever going to leave us. He's going to stand beside us. He's going to stand beside us. Tom was talking a Sunday morning about Beauty and the Beast. And I've seen that movie a couple times this week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But I, I grew up watching all those Disney movies, and with what Disney just passed these, this past week, I'd, I'd have sick to my stomach with anything Disney. Uh, with Mickey Mouse, and they, they're no longer allowed to come out and say, Ladies and gentlemen, because they're afraid it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. I mean, all kinds of junk. This is stuff we're going to have to live with forever. I mean, it's just going to get worse and get worse and get worse. And uh, Mickey Mouse is no longer to be identified as a male, and Minnie Mouse is no longer to be identified as a female. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. It's stupidity. Stupidity is what it is. But I grew up watching this Disney movie, and my girls are growing up watching this Disney movie. And it's probably one of my favorites, but I say that about all of them. Well, we always, me and Drew watched it growing up, was The Lion King. That was one we always watched. And uh, one of my favorite parts in that movie, and if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. My favorite part is when little Simba's there with his father, and they're looking out over the pride land is what they call it, and they're looking out how, how beautiful it is, and he asks his father, he said, what's that dark shadowy place over there? And he tells him to never go there. But he got curious. How we talked about. Simba got curious. And uh, he goes with his little friend over to where he wasn't supposed to go. And the hyenas, you remember? The hyenas backed him up in a corner. You remember? Well, I remember. I can about quote it to you, but I'm going to embarrass myself. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> but but they, they back little Simba and his friend up to a corner. And they back him up there. And, and little Simba does the only thing he knows to do. He stomps that little foot to the ground and he lets that little... Rawr! And them hyenas laugh and they say, that's funny. Do it again. Do it again. And that time Simba plants his foot in the ground and he lets out that roar, but that time it's a great big old loud roar. That wasn't from no cub, but from the daddy cub. From the daddy. And about that time they looked up and guess who was standing behind Simba? Papa. Big daddy was standing behind Simba. So said, Kev, why in the world you tell me this story? Because when the enemy backs us up in a corner, we ain't no match for him. When we roar at him, he's just going to laugh at us. But with the one standing next to us, we ain't got nothing to be afraid of tonight. 
he picked up that little cub and that cub's little friend and they ran on out of there and the good guy won, just like it always does, just like it always happens. We've got one standing with us tonight, standing in our place, standing in our place that when we can't roar on our own, because our, our roar is laughable towards the devil, but man, the one standing with us, when he roars, the devil's shaking in his shoes, he's gone, just like those hyenas, just like those hyenas. Me and Tom need to quit watching so much Disney. I think we haven't watched too much Disney. I'm thankful for a God, a God that every day we wake up, He's there and He's faithful to be there. He's faithful to be there. He's consistent. He's consistent. He's way more consistent than I am. There's some days where I could be a lot better. I could, I could do a lot better. I try to live a good life every day. But there's a lot I could do better. We could all do better. We ain't ever going to be perfect. Ain't, ain't none of us ever going to be perfect. We know the song the little kids sing, he's still working on me to make me what I... We could be 100, year old, 100 years old and still sing that song because God's still working on each and every one of us. But as long as we keep him standing beside us, man, there ain't nothing we can't do. We can do anything as long as he's in the, in the midst of it all. I was... I didn't know if I was going to tell this story or not. I know I've probably told it here before. It's one of my, my favorite stories. But it's a story about a lawyer from the Chicago area. His name was Mr. Spafford. He had four daughters. I believe the story says. It's been a long time since I read it, but I believe he had four daughters. He had a, had a baby that he had lost to the, to the scarlet fever and uh, lost it just as a little baby. And he had his four daughters. And, uh, in Chicago, him being a lawyer... Uh, the economy took a bad dive for the worst, and I don't really know exactly what happened to his family. The story just says it, it left them heartbroken. It left them devastated what took place. and They lost their, a lot of their assets in a fire. Just a lot of bad things was happening to this man. So he decides that he was going to get on a ship, and he was going to go to a revival across the, uh, across the ocean that he had heard about, and had some friends over there, some preacher friends over there and things that he was going to go listen to to try and encourage his family. And uh, he gets his wife, he gets his daughters, and he puts them on the ship. And right when he was getting ready to aboard the ship, he got word that he had an important, important business meeting that he had to attend. Well, the girls, the wife didn't really want to get on without him, but he encouraged them to go ahead and get on and he would get the ticket to the next ship that was selling out the next day. And he'd meet up with them in a few days. Well, as he puts his daughters and the wife on the ship and he walks away. In the middle of the night, that ship that his daughters and his wife was on struck another vessel, struck another ship and sank to the bottom of the ocean. His wife was saved from the, from the, the, the crash and she got to the other side and wrote to him and she wrote him a letter and this is all the letter said. It said, saved alone. His four daughters drowned in that horrible, horrible accident. I mean, everything this man had gone through, losing a baby, losing four daughters, losing a lot of his assets, it'd be enough to make anybody want to pull their hair out and scream. I mean, it would. It would. Make you want to lose your mind. And he gets on the ship as quick as he can. He starts sailing across the ocean. He goes out to the edge of the ship and sailing out a couple hours. And as they get out about halfway there, the captain of that ship come to him to let him know they was near the location where his daughters had drowned. And he walked away. And this man, Mr. Spafford, got out a piece of paper and a pen and wrote down these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. How can a man who has lost so much Lose his kids, lose his assets, a lot of his business. How can a man write down those words? Because the Lord was standing by him. That's the, only, that's the only way there is to say that tonight. Because there was one greater than him that stood with him, and it was the Lord. It was the Lord. He's standing with us tonight. I know this, is, this message is about as simple as it gets, but I think sometimes it's just good to remind us in this evil world that we're living in, that when we leave this church and we go to our job, we, we live our life, we do know that there is a God that's walking right next to us and we ain't got anything to fear, anything to be afraid of because he's there and he watches over us. I was thinking about this this evening. I wonder how many times God has protected us and we didn't even know it. I wonder how many times God has protected us from a car accident and we didn't even have a clue he protected us. The things that we've done, the things that we get ourselves into, uh, 
just something real quick. I remember one time, me and my wife and, and Macy was out eating at a restaurant in West Union, and uh, we come home, uh, and I got on Facebook to find out the restaurant we was at, a man come in with a gun, and uh, held everybody at gunpoint, and took all the cash out of the cash registers and stuff. This has been a few years ago. And I mean, we were just there. I mean, just, I mean, we left West Union in the restaurant and come home and went home a couple hours. And I seen that had happened. I mean, God watches over us when we ain't even got a clue that he's watching over us. He's standing with us. And that's what Paul was letting us know. There's going to be people come and there's going to be people go. But he ain't going nowhere. He's going to stand with ever. He said he stood with me and he delivered me and he strengthened me. And God is doing that for us still. That He done it for Paul and he's still doing it for us in 2022, isn't he? He's doing it for us. That's all I have tonight. Stand with me if you will. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed just for a moment. Yeah, we're going to play this slideshow here. But I want to give that opportunity if there's somebody that is going through something, a trial, struggle, storm, whatever, whatever you want to name it tonight. God is here and we can get that taken care of.